In this video, we're gonna be using K-Shape Works Shaping Up with tallow and the Ever Ready 1914 Single Edge Razor. Stay tuned. Hey there folks and welcome back for another video and if it's your first time welcome aboard I hope you'll consider subscribing uh, below. So today we're going to be shaving with K Shave Works Shaping Up. This smells like Brute so if you're familiar with old school Brute that's what it smells like. Really really nice scent, scent strength for me slightly over medium 5.5 uh, to 6 and we'll talk a little bit about cost and ingredients as we go. Again Shaping Up by K Shave Works. We're also going to be using the Ever Ready 1914 Single Edge Razor uh, sent to me by Gray Dog. If you're watching Gray Dog, thank you. I'm going to be using a gem blade in this, and this is not a paint scraper blade uh, if you're new. And the way this goes in is you lift the razor up like so, and then you uh, set the razor down. There's a couple of bars in there where the notches go on the razor, and I'll show you once I put it in. And it sets in there like so, and then you just simply flip the top down and you're ready to get busy. So let's get to misting here. Again, uh, these misting bottles I found work really well for me for um, just distributing moisture better. And we're working on about 24 hours growth there today, which is normal for me. Uh, today for the pre-shave, we're not gonna use the cube. We're gonna use the ice tube from PAA. This is mentholated, so we'll add a little mentholation to our shaping up. By the way, shaping up, let's talk about it a little bit. Shaping up by K Shave Works is right now um, at West Coast Shaving on clearance for $14.99. Uh, we'll put up the price, card, price chart for you at four ounces. That is $3.74, which is definitely a, uh, a good price. Uh, it's normally $19.99, and then it falls down on our chart into that fair range. So right now, if you want to get this soap, if you like Brute, um, this is my, one you might want to try. We're using the Gray Dog brush, too, which he made from bamboo. Again, thank you, Gray Dog. And let's get going with our K-Shave Works today. It's been a while since I've used uh, K-Shave Works. You don't see them used as much, and I think they went to wholesale only, so they don't sell out of their own store anymore uh, and you don't you just don't see these subs so much but as much but they're uh, actually quite nice couple of announcements I want to make while we're lathering here I'm going to, this will probably be the last face shave video that you'll see for a few days because uh, hopefully by the time you're seeing this video I am on my way out in the woods um, taking a fishing trip it is very remote no cell service to speak of, I have to drive like from the location I go um, 20, 25 minutes just to get a cell signal. So no cell signal, no replying to comments, no watching videos, no nothing, just being outdoors, camping, which I really like. And it's gonna be good to get off the grid for a few days. I do have some canned material or videos I've already shot um, that I'll be uh, putting up. One of them is top 10 brushes of uh, summer, my favorite 10, let's put it that way. And I also have top five DE razors. So those will be going up probably Friday and Saturday early morning. So they're scheduled, but I won't be posting them like in the groups and so on. So if you want to see when those go live, hit the bell notification below. If you're subscribed and it will tell you when those pop up so you can check those videos out. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests for those videos and so we shall deliver. And, uh, Maybe I'll have a head shave video up too that I've got canned that I can release, but I won't be able to respond to any comments or IMs or anything uh, during that time because uh, no cell signal, no nothing, just being out on the on the river, um, out in the woods, which is great. Okay, let's get going with our shaping up, which again smells like brute. The ingredients on this soap, it has some nice nice ingredients in this this version. It has a shea jojoba. And cocoa, which I personally like in uh, shaving soaps, I think they add a little something to the to the shave. And by the way, these a lot of these um, single edge razors, you really use them a little flat, flatter than you would uh, normal de eraser or you know closer to your skin. And sometimes you can just set the sort of the cap on your skin and then get going with them, you know, just 
set the cap down, then just sort of rotate it out wherever you, where it feel, wherever it feels comfortable for you. I'm getting some good mentho, menthol cooling from the ice tube, and this soap smells great. Getting good slickness uh, out of it. Really, really nice. And these uh, single edge razors, um, you see them, you know, people use them from time to time, but apart from uh, Fuzzy with shaving, Fuzzy, he is like probably the number one, um, or one of the foremost single edge enthusiasts there are. <laughs> there is, I should say, in the community. Um, using injectors and, and uh, razors like this. These do work well. And these blades, this gym blade, for example, it will typically last you longer than a DE. How long? It just depends on the type of beard you have and all that kind of stuff. But typically, they will uh, give you some additional shaves. I know some people like to strop them on a strop or a pair of jeans or something to you know just smooth it out a little bit, and that's fine if you want to do that. Um, it's just relather and get going here. By the way, no problems at all quality-wise with this soap, and it smells terrific. It's got that really nice old-school brute, which is sort of a fougere-type scent, I would call it. Um, I was talking to Shave326, Ken Klitschko, and he's never smelled brute before, and I was like, oh, triggered. <laughs> My voice is still a little bit froggy there, so I apologize for that, but uh, I'm definitely feeling better. So, And I think getting out... Um, Getting out in the woods and just, you know, honestly, I feel a lot better when I get out in situations like that where I'm just disconnected. As much as I like watching everybody's videos and staying connected, I also like to to get out like that. And so the location that we typically go is supposed to be closed for two years because the federal government is doing a bunch of work on the on the road that is adjacent to it and it has closed. But they've opened it for like two months, so I'm gonna go. A buddy of mine, I'm gonna go camping, and there's nothing there. Like there's no, there's not much in the way of uh, amenities. You know, there's no running water or anything like that. So you have to take all your own stuff. They do have like little uh, porta potty type bathrooms ever so often at some of the campsites, but it's not a place where there's just like a bunch of you know. Bat, real bathrooms and stuff like that. And I like that. It's kind of, you know, real camping, as I like to say, where you don't have, you know, running water and internet and power, but, you know, no power, none of that stuff. Just out in the woods, all you have is a fire pit and maybe an outhouse type bathroom, but at many of the sites, not even that. So you're just, you're just literally out there camping. And I like that a lot. So I'll be packing up and again, I shoot these videos normally a day ahead. So by the time you're watching this, I'm probably on my way or maybe even there and enjoying myself, you know, putting up the tent and doing all the prep work you have to do. And then we'll try to catch some trout. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it um, because this COVID thing is just, you know, I've really been cautious about not doing a lot of socializing and things um, because of the, you know, the Rona. Uh, it's still in full bloom here in the U.S. Like we, we lost a thousand more people yesterday. And I think we've lost something like 140 some thousand people at this point. So, you know, I definitely take it seriously. But when you're going out of the woods, you're not going to be around a lot of people. You know, and I don't have to be close to my buddy you know I bring my own tent he brings his so really no won't encounter a lot of people which is great save going really really well just as I'd expect I mean no no problems whatsoever this some might call an old man scent if to use DK's terms he refers to a lot of scents as old man scent to me it's an old man that smells good <laughs> This is a classic and timeless scent, I believe. I don't know how long this has been around, but it's been around a very long time. And uh, it still hits the spot. And as you notice, when you watch me, you know, applying lather, I'm not really scrubbing. Um, scrubbing is done in the shower. I don't scrub my face with the brush because I'm dragging the steel 
across the face, you know, and the, I, I, I don't want to um, be rougher on my face than need be. I'm a seven day away, a week shaver. And so I like to be relatively gentle on my face when it comes to lathering. All I need is some slickness. That's it. I do hear people referring to protection. I'm not sure what they mean. For me, protection, as it applies to a shaving soap, means slickness, meaning allowing that razor to glide across my skin. And I used to sort of uh, believe in cushion and all that kind of stuff. And I do believe it's possible to have cushion, but I don't know that you want cushion really because we're trying to get close, right? And so if something has cushion and it's holding the razor blade up off your skin, I'm trying to get close to my skin to shave the whiskers. And if it's holding it, you know, even a, a fraction of a measurement away, it's probably affecting that um, closeness. And so I want that blade to be as close as possible, but I want it just to glide and cut the hair. It's just, so that's what I want. Um, I don't think personally that there's any soap available that's going to protect you from from improper technique. In other words, especially with a straight razor. So if you put a straight razor to your face at the wrong angle with enough force, I don't care. There's no soap on the planet that's going to prevent you from cutting yourself. Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> I don't care if you're using, you know, the most expensive soap there is. It's steel versus air, water, and soap. And the steel's going to win. So if you do the wrong thing, with the blade pressed down too hard, or give you an example. If I make a horizontal movement on this lather, and let's just say I'm using the most expensive lather there is, and I make a horizontal movement, that is a cut. Every time, all the time, I don't care how much lather. I can build lather the size of this bathroom. And if I make a horizontal movement with that blade orient on my face, it's a cut. If I press the straight razor, at the wrong angle to my skin, it's a cut. Um, there's just certain things if you do, there is no protecting against it. The protection is in my hand and in my head, you know. <laughs> Those two things controlling the way this blade works. Um, so for me, the protection means slickness and allowing this blade to glide like so, which is, this is giving me everything I need. And I think there's probably is a limit on slickness. There's no way for us to objectively measure it. Um, be, really, you can only be so slick, you know. So, this soap is definitely doing its job. It's allowing that razor to glide, you know. Um, but it ultimately, in my opinion, this is just me, and other people will weigh in. And, and these are good conversations to have, you know. I, I asked uh, DK this morning or yesterday when I was watching his video, you know, what do you mean by protection? Because I hear protection and I think sometimes new people get the idea that oh this is this is somehow gonna save me if I have poor technique or if I put the blade to my fa face improperly or if I go too hard it won't but what it will do is leave behind a nice base for your razor to glide on but I want this razor to be close to my skin that's the object and so if I have a lot of cushion it's the opposite of what I want. And Johan talked about this. Johan Solo, as I like to call him. He talked about this in one of his videos and it really makes a lot of sense to me. I don't really want cushion or something um, providing for resistance. I want slickness just so it glides. I don't want resistance. The reason we're using soap is so we don't have resistance because the slickness allows for, see how it's with that res somewhat residual slickness there. See how it's gliding? That's what you want. So you don't have to have a ton of lather because the razor will glide on that little bit of moisture there perfectly. You see that? So that's what I want. I'm not looking for cushion. I'm not looking for anything to protect me from cuts because I honestly don't think it that it can. You know, If I do the wrong thing with this razor, push down too hard, horizontal movement, or do something wrong, it's a cut almost for me. And based on my, you know, eight years or 
more of, of, of doing this. Um, it doesn't protect me from cuts. I protect me from cuts. That's the way I look at it. It does allow the razor to move. The one instance where I think it can protect you is if you have a good layer of slickness, the razor isn't likely to stop. And if it stops abruptly, you could cut yourself. So again, slickness to me equals protection. So that's sort of my definition as it applies to traditional shaving protection. Slickness, allowing that blade to move and keep moving and not stop or skip or jump. In that regard, I think there's protection, but I don't think with regard to cushion that there's protection. And this is one uh, that I think a lot of people weigh in and maybe it'll be a um, interesting conversation. I know DK will probably weigh in with his thoughts. I won't be able to see it for a while, but I'm sure I'll watch it when I get back. Okay, let me rinse and we'll get into the post. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back with our Lancaster towel. Moisture magnet. That was a really nice shave. I must tell you, don't sleep on these old gym style uh, razors, single edge, really, really good. This one is an ever ready, by the way. They make gym and I think there's one late um, star, I wanna say, or something like that. Um, really, really nice, good shavers that not a lot of people use a ton, exception of fuzzy and You'll see a few other people use them from time to time, but not a lot, and they, they shave well. And uh, give yourself some blades, not paint scraper blades, ones that are designed for shaving. And uh, you can get some really nice shaves out of these. And oftentimes you can find these razors uh, on eBay for not too much, a lot of times 10 bucks, between 10 and 20 bucks. And uh, they're still good shavers, have stood the test of time, that was the magic made by Witch Thayers. I did use the alum uh, off screen, off cam, just to save a little time. And so we're gonna close this one out today with Brute. I have decanted it into a glass bottle. People have asked me where I get these bottles. Amazon, I will link it below for you. But this is just classic Brute, which I think is a phenomenal old school Fougerish type scent. And we'll pour a little out here. Slap it on and we're going to be smelling like a good smelling old man. Not just old man, good smelling old man. Oh yeah. Such a classic throwback. I know this will remind you of your your dad, maybe your grandfather or someone like that. Um, still works, still great even today. Brute. And if you want a soap to match it, check out Shaping Up by K-Shave Works. I think PAA also has et tu. Um, which is another brute inspired soap. Really, really nice. Um, we use the Gray Dog made from bamboo. Thank you again, Gray Dog, if you're watching, and thank you for the razor. Most importantly, thanks to each and every one of you. Stay tuned. Again, if you want to be alerted to the videos upcoming, hit the bell below. Please subscribe. I have been your host, CDB, and I'm reminding you it's your shave. Do it your way. God bless.